Well, howdy everybody, it's that time of week. Uh, welcome back to episode 8 of uh, this first season of Iron Sword. I do always mark it on YouTube as, you know, the, the video thumbnail always has, you know, S1, E, whatever. Like, it's, I do can think of it as just the first season. I'm not, I wasn't entirely sure for a while what would be, like, the arc of the season, where we're going. Like, when, when will it be season 2? When is that going to be clear? And I feel like last session, that was finally starting to take a little bit of form. Uh, by the end of last time, I'm starting to get a sense of, like, what is this season about? Where are we headed? And I, th and I don't know how quickly we're going to get there, but I think that, oh, depending on how roles go, Coyote is going to find his way to this, this lake that we, uh, that we invented last time, eventually. And th this season is about getting there, uh, finding, his, finding his father in time, and dealing with this threat to the town of Gibbet. And, like, wrapping all of that up is going to be, in my mind, what will be the end of the season. Which, uh, I, I guess brings us to what happened last time, uh, in a bit of a roundabout way of, like, going past it and then heading back. So last time, um, was really about trying to figure out, like, how are we going to find this body? And, uh, there was, there's a lot more roleplay last time than a lot of, like, mechanical moving forward and making a lot of rolls. It happens, but... Had some just like long scenes with uh, Coyote talking about like what it is to be Iron Sworn and the dangers involved with that, uh, with uh, with Angel Face, and um, wound up asking around town to try and figure out like what happened with the body. So the, the major points, if you missed it, in order to be caught up, is uh, found out that somewhere we don't know where, but legend has it basically that there is this this lake, um, scroll the Forgotten Lake. There we go. Scrolling through my notes here. Uh, there's, a, there's a place that's known as the Forgotten Lake where there's just like this ancient, ancient being there um, known as the Golnock. Like this is a like, prehistorical kind of belief in this thing. And the, the idea is it's this like otherworldly like, powerful entity that lives in this horrible, horrible lake. Um, and if you, if you throw something in the lake and the Golnock eats it, uh, usually like a living creature. But whatever the Golnock eats, it not only eats its physical form, but slowly it begins to eat through uh, its past, present, and future. Like, basically, it erodes away any trace that it ever existed. It, it eradicates it from the past. And so the the theory is that this, uh, for, that the Forgotten Lake and the Golnock is something that the, uh, the, the guy from Robert's Gang who made off with, with the body thinks that it's going to be dumping the body in that lake so that not only will Coyote's dad's body be... Well, Filch. Will Filch's body be taken care of? But it will have never existed. Clearly, there's no evidence of a murder. It's the uh, the perfect way to get away with it. There's just... it. Make sure that this... Not only was uh, there no body from a murder, but there's... That person never existed. How could they be murdered? Um, so Coyote's going to need to find this place and all of that. Um... I think those are the that was really the major thing that happened. Oh, and um, yeah, the one one other major thing that happened last time, if you've been following along, is um, this little this emblem, the uh, the little like disc that was left behind by the shadow bears, planted by time. Um, the um, supposedly the thing that's going to allow the shadow bears to basically just teleport here after some kind of a ritual. Um, Coyote has found it. He went around town with, uh, with Farah, this, this gal who was, who is, seems to have taken a bit of a shine to Coyote's interest. Like, doesn't get a lot of that. She's not much of a looker. And so they, they went all around town looking around and, uh, by being escorted around, it gave Coyote a chance to kind of see things from a different perspective and eventually find a, uh, a good hiding space. And so he came across this, uh, he came across the, the disc. Uh, I'm sorry, again, I'm... Even like like last week, I'm really stuffed up again. I, I apologize for it. I hope I don't. I'm not too snuffly tonight. What's up, K Killer? I just my this time of year has been making my allergies worse and everything. I'm rubbing my eyes a lot because I just put my contacts in and just allergies all over. But uh, yeah, let's let's get started. This is always the hardest part because I go into this every week and I've I've put in no thought since last time. Kind of intentionally, I, I think it kind of lends something to this to really just have no idea where we're going. But 
and take vitamin C. I am pretty sure there have been numerous studies indicating that that will do nothing. It, and more importantly, I don't have it uh, readily available. Certainly not just like in like supplement form. I'm sure I have things that have vitamin C in them. But but yes, I, I would look into that because I'm I'm pretty sure it's been demonstrated that the claims that vitamin C would take care of colds and stuff like that are entirely fraudulent. In fact, there's a big lawsuit against Airborne for that. Yes, that is because of what is known as the placebo effect. But that's either here here nor there. So we left off last time with I believe right after grabbing the. Um, Grabbing the the disc, and I think we, we kind of fade out on that day. Because um, it was getting pretty late into the night. And um, so the next move forward, our, our major thing that we're missing... God, I is so itchy. I really apologize. I'm just like, I, I could just spend the next hour just rubbing at the corner of my eye. Because every once in a while, my body remembers that I'm allergic to cats, and I, I have them. So they're all, their hair is all over the place. So we need to find, there's two things that are major, oh, hold on, let me switch over to, uh, while I'm talking about the things that are majorly important to the character, they're written right here. Um, we have our, our two vows that are, that are open right now. And then we have a little bit of a pseudo vow. It's not officially vowed, because that was kind of the point, but there was, uh, I'll, I'll go over that last. So we have, I will find Dad's body to prove Robert's a murderer. And, um, we're, that one's in progress. We, we know we need to find the lake. We're, we just need to find the lake now. And get there and recover it and whatever it takes to get it back before it's too late. And I will defend Jibbit against the Shadow Bears and kill Tan. Uh, so we've done a couple of marks of progress for that. There was, um, the, the major one, the, the it was just been two. We've had the army, sort of, that we've started raising. We got the support of Big Brother, this kind of mercenary fellow who used to be a priest. Uh, he's got a gang in the area, and we've convinced him to help us out because we were making peace with Robert, as far as he knows. Um, so that was, that was one of our milestones on that. We've got a little bit of some forces raised, and then we found the, uh, we found the disc that, that they planted. And the reason why that's important is we came up with a plan to tie this all together. Where if there is this forgotten lake where uh, where the Golnock will be able to just devour things and make them have never existed. As long as we're fighting it anyway, all we have to do is pitch the disc into that lake. They, uh, they summon themselves forth, get devoured by the Golnock, and then, hey, no Shadow Bears ever existed. It was never a problem. So we'll we'll take care of two birds with one stone on that. These are gonna these are, are gonna get milestones in kind of the same places. But then our pseudo vow that I was talking about, there was our long conversation about what it is to be an iron sworn. And how it's this thing that takes a lot of discipline and training because the there's kind of a supernatural sort of high that you get from making and fulfilling the vows. Um, yeah, it, it's a really cool game, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how it works. Uh, it's a game called Iron Sworn, just to uh, start off with that. Available for free at ironswornrpg.com. You can get the full game, as well as all sorts of supplements like this sheet and cards and quick references and stuff like that. Highly recommend you check it out. The cool thing about it is that you can play it entirely without a DM. A lot of things are randomly generated. You can do solo play. It's been a lot of fun. I'll go over the bare amount of the mechanics you'll need to know as we do the game. But, uh, but yeah, so because it's like this addictive sort of thing, uh, it's dangerous to be able to not have it the, uh, the proper training. Because a Angel Face has gotten the sense that Coyote is starting to swear vows a little bit too lightly, and she's afraid he'll go over the deep end. And, um, or go into the deep end, I guess. Go off the edge. Mix all sorts of metaphors. She's afraid he'll be, he'll be metaphor mixing. And um, Coyote asked her to to train him, and she said that he would. Uh, that she would, but only if he. Only if when he successfully defended Jibbit against the Shadow Bears, because she wants proof that he won't just swear vows that benefit him. But the point is to swear vows for the benefit of all around him. Like 
She's afraid that if he just does, if he does things that are good for him only, like finding his father, like that's primarily a thing that's for his benefit. That's not proof enough that he'll see things through even when they're difficult and will take vows seriously. So there's kind of a, a pseudo vow contingent on that other one, which is like, when that's done, we're going to start our training. Like we're going to do this for real. We're going to become an iron sworn. But who knows how much might change between now and then. Ah. So, it's a new day. Uh, Coyote was too exhausted. Like, much as he needs to find this body in time, uh, he's no good if he can't rest. So, especially when we, uh, when we look at his trackers over here. So, a brief overview of this sheet, since I know, K-Killer, you're, you're new to the game. Bunch of stuff going on here, but it's pretty simple. You see our top line... Uh, where it says Edge, Heart, Iron, Shadow, and Wits. Those are our stats. Unlike a lot of games, those are never going to change. They are what they are. They define our character and what they're good at and what they're bad at. Edge is more or less like your... Uh, it's kind of like dexterity in other games. Like how well can you aim and uh, how, how, how good of hand-eye coordination do you have. That sort of stuff. Heart is your... Ability to convince people, your ability to keep on going when things are tough, it's that sort of thing. Uh, iron is physically how tough are you? How how much da how much of a whoop ass can you can you uh, bring out? Shadow, how sneaky can you be? How underhanded? Not only sneaky in a literal like oh you can't see me sense, but how tricky can you be? Are you a good liar? Are you underhanded? And uh, as you can probably see from way over on the left, uh, yes, we're we're a little bit of that. And then Wits, how aware are you of your world? Um, uh, I'm in Pacific time. So it is it is 8.12 where I am. Uh, so those are our stats. They're not going to change. Um, we have assets over there on the left. They allow us to do some special stuff in certain circumstances. Um, you can read what they are. But the uh, the little vertical strips that you see on the sheet, the we got the one all the way on the left, which is our momentum tracker. Uh, what you need to know for now is the higher that is, the better. Right now, it's not great. Uh, and then over on the right, which is what got me thinking about this, we have our health, spirit, and supply trackers. Um, they're kind of, like, all cumul cumul cumulatively our health. Um, various things that we'll do in this game are going to add or deplete from, from these trackers. And the lower they are, kind of the worse off our character is getting. And as you can see, health is getting really low. It doesn't mean that we're, like, on the verge of dying. It does mean that it's dangerous. Uh, physical things that harm us could well could well kill us. Like, we're getting into a bad spot. We've been pretty hurt lately. We've got high spirits, though. We just had a little bit of time to, like, hang out in town and finally rest and have a good conversation with a friend. So we're, our spirit is picking up. And then our supply, we're, we're kind of poor uh, in the set, and we're not very well prepared for adventure. So, the number one thing I need to take care of is that health. Um, I remember last time we were trying to see a doctor, and uh, it was the middle of the night, and he was not interested, or a dentist, really. He was not interested in treating us. So, the next day... Uh, I guess we can we can start off with just doing that. Like we'll we'll fade in on uh, Coyote in the in the kind of the dentist's office, and uh, we'll just uh, I was gonna say we'll assume that he agreed to to treat him. Yeah, let's. I'm not interested in seeing whether or not that'll happen. I think it's it's enough for granted that it'll happen. That we'll just we'll assume the Coyote was successful at compelling him. Be like, hey man, you're you're a doctor. I'm, I'm really messed up. Can you help me? And we'll just see how well of a job he does. So they're, they're in the middle of this conversation. Coyote's sitting, kind of like reclined back in this dentist chair, probably being stitched up and given some kind of uh, various unguents and stuff like that to try mm -hmm. and just help him help him deal with the pain um, while, while Chops, the dentist that he had talked to, is uh, had a drunken night with one time. He's kind of grousing over his lost sleep and how uh, Coyote was banging on his door at like 11 o'clock at night. And yeah, uh, Chops in, in the middle of just like pulling a, uh, a stitch tight. 
You know, Coyote, I would appreciate it if from now on you kept our dealings to business hours. <laughs> ha, yeah, yeah, no, I, I got it. I'm, I, I, I must have misinterpreted. You know, I, I thought we had a, I, th I thought we had a little, you know, we shared that drink the one night. I, I stepped over the line. I, I thought we had more. I thought we were maybe a little bit closer than you saw, and that, that's that's my fault. I apologize. We did indeed have a night of camaraderie, but then you left. You left, Coyote, and we came to an agreement. You have done nothing <laughs> to do your part of that agreement. I am waiting. I'd like you to explain yourself. Where did you go? Why have you been putting me off? Coyote um, wants to try and settle Chops down a little bit and let him know, like, hey, man, I'm, look, I'm in the middle of it. I haven't given up. I didn't mean to skip town for so long. I, I just, um, I got in a bad situation. I mean, look at me. I couldn't do it right away, but it's still in progress. We're going to take down Robert. In fact, I got all the more reason to do it now. Before, it was about framing Robert for murder. Well, something fell in your lap. And, well, fell in my lap, too, but it's not nearly as nice. Robert is a murderer. Yeah. I watched him kill my dad right in front of me. Not two days ago. So we're going to take him down. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to help you, but it's not even about you at this point. So don't worry. Give me time. You'll get what you want. And so let's see how well he convinces him to be like, dude, get off my back. Like, I've got way worse concerns and all the more reason to do this. So, uh, mechanically, this is how this works in this game. This is a Powered by the Apocalypse type system. Um, which means that when we meet certain conditions, we do certain types of moves. In this case, we're doing a move called Compel. And, uh, again, if you want to follow along at home and, uh, would like to see how these moves work... You can get all of this stuff available for free at ironshornrpg.com. Um, highly recommend you do. So we're making a move called Compel, which says, When you attempt to persuade someone to do something, envision your approach and roll. So we've, we've envisioned our approach. And uh, if we are charming, pacifying, bartering, or convincing, roll plus heart, which I'm pretty sure is what we're doing. We're definitely not threatening or inciting, which would be iron. I'm not just like, if you don't shut up, gonna pound your face in. Uh, and we're not lying or sweat. Everything we said is true. It's all about like, hey, dude, like, come on. I got this. You don't, you don't need to tell me that we're taking down Red Robert. So, uh, so I get to roll plus, plus heart, which is great. It's my best stat. Um, it's kind of funny that Coyote's lying all the time because he's just as good at telling people the truth and just being honest. He just doesn't all that often. Um... But anyway, I would get plus one if I share a bond, but I do not have a bond with this person. We kind of bonded, but we are not literally bonds. Um, so the way this works is I'm going to roll my heart and then show you when these dice come up what they mean. All right, starting things off much better than last time with a strong hit from the very beginning. Um, so the way this works, and one of the dice are, one of the dice is off the screen, so just look down below to see what it is. We, we roll three dice. One of them is six-sided, right here. And then we roll two ten-sided dice, which are, which were a four and a two. And, um, what we do is we take this value, the three, we add it to whatever stat we're using. So heart, that's why it's, we roll plus heart. So three plus three equals... The six that you see right here. Um, we get a six out of that. Now we take that six and we compare it to the challenge dice. So you see one of them is a four. Six is higher than four. And the other one is a two. Six is higher than two. 
Because it is higher than each of those dice individually, we have what is known as a strong hit, which means best result. Uh, we're going to get what we want out of this. It's going to go well. Things are, Our meters and stuff tend to get higher. Things go well. It's basically, you get what you want with no compromises. A step down from that is what's known as a weak hit, which is when generally you still get what you want, but there's a bit more of a price to it. You know, there's... There's some compromise involved, or maybe there's not compromise, but it's, it takes it out of you a little bit to get what you needed. That's when your die is higher than one, but lower than the other. And then a step down from that, as you can probably guess, is the miss, which is when your die is just lower than both of them. And uh, that that's when things go poorly, you don't get what you want. Um, and you, you tend to pay the price for it. You don't want those. Now, you have a limited ability to manipulate that after the fact. That's when this momentum meter comes in. We don't have a lot of control right now. The reason why the higher it is, the better, is that... Let's say, for instance, that I only rolled a 3. Or... Yeah, sure, we'll say a 3. I rolled a 3. That would make a weak hit in this, because it's lower than four, but higher than two, and I'm like, oh man, I'd really like that strong hit. Now let's also pretend that my momentum was five. It's not, and I don't want to forget, so I'm going to put it back where it is. So, like, let's pretend we had a momentum of plus five. Because five is higher than four, I could do what's called... I, I could reset my momentum, I could burn it all in one go and say, five is higher than four, cool. Burn it, it would go back to this reset value, as you see, plus one. And that 5 would cancel out anything lower than it. So basically, I'd say I'm burning my momentum. It gets rid of the 4. It gets rid of the 2. There's no dice. Uh, my 3, and again, in this example, is higher than both of those. I've turned that weak hit into a strong hit. Um, now you can do that even if the... Uh, uh, even if it's only higher than one of them. It's just... It's a way you burn momentum. You can... Do stuff. So the higher your momentum is, the more likely you are able to burn things off. Now, as you see, it only goes up to plus 10. Maxes out at that point. Any further momentum is not helped. Anyway, you get the idea. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. But I'm going to assume you got it. <laughs> People who've been watching the YouTube videos, I'm sure, are just like, yeah, oh my god, every single time. You got to start off the explanation. And yes, I, I, I do like starting off that way. Because who knows? Maybe you're watching this for the very first time. You have no idea how the game works. Might as well not assume. So, we got a strong hit. They'll do what you want or share what you know. Take plus one momentum. So, there we go. Let's put that up to our plus two. And uh, if you use this to gather information, make that move now and add plus one. Um, That's not what I was doing. I was not getting him to talk. In fact, I was getting him to kind of shut up and not give me any trouble over this. Basically, this was a role to make sure that Chops isn't going to have some kind of greater demand be like hey because the clock's been ticking i'm gonna need you to do he, he's not gonna threaten me because as we know chops is a murderous dentist uh based on things he has said or at least implied he has no problem killing somebody the previous plan and potentially one that he's already made a move on was he was going to kill somebody or otherwise He'd find his way to a dead body, and he wasn't all that specific about how he would do it. And then they would frame Robert for the murder. Chops is a dangerous guy. And we've managed to pacify him and be like, you don't need to direct that towards me. Uh, in fact, we haven't, we, we're not looking at it actually right now, but I, as a as the kind of player and narrator, uh, like the idea that, indeed, he's not going to make it our problem, but... Chops totally, like, already did his part. Like, he has killed somebody and now has to, like... He's... That's why he was so upset about this. Is because he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with the body. I've got my own... Like, now I am a murderer. And I gotta hide this. Meanwhile, I, I like, I thought you were going to act on it more quickly. Um, so anyway. Let's see how well Chops heals him. Because he's, he's been pacified... Chops is going to make the, um, what is it here? The, I gotta scroll up in my moves list. The heal move, I should have figured. When you treat an injury or an ailment. Now, ordinarily, these are things that I would just, 
I would have my character do them, but in this case, Coyote is no healer. He's not going to be good at healing himself uh, or anybody else, but that's why he has friends who can do some of the hard stuff for him, as long as he keeps them happy. And he, I think he's indeed kept him happy, so let's see all those stitch pulls that uh, he was doing, how well they, they come out. Uh, so he's going to roll his wits, uh, which he's got pretty high. I feel like if I were statting out chops, I'd probably give him wits as the highest, and then after that he's got probably shadow and iron, and then edge and hard are his low ones. He does not have a lot of hard. He's not great at making people like him. Um... And he's not all that, just like nimble. So yeah, uh, he's going to roll his wits with a plus three and see see what happens. Can we get Coyote a little bit more healed up? It'd be nice, because right now he is he is hurting. No, apparently he's still just a little distracted by all of this. Uh, like, his, his being upset at Coyote uh, has got him... And maybe the lost sleep from last night. We indeed have a miss. Our momentum is way too low to do anything about it. Because not only did we roll low on our action die, we rolled really high on the uh, challenge dice, and yeah. So, miss. Your aid is ineffective. Pay the price. Um, yeah, so we have a botched healing job. Um, maybe intentionally, maybe not, but at the very least, I doubt Chops cares all that much. So, paying the price for a botched healing job, I... Uh, now we could certainly just make him endure harm. That would be the simplest, uh, simplest result of all this, where it's just like, hey, you know, you, uh, it hurts you more. And I think that could be part of it. But I'd like to do something a little bit more interesting than that. Because we were talking about how he's using various, like, unguents and stuff. Um, can we get kind of a little bit of a turn on this that leads us in a direction? Now, when I need some inspiration on stuff like that, We've got various oracles here, and uh, I've got a drop down that you can't see. I want to see, not Mystic Backlash, but there's one in here called Plot Twist. I'm hoping that maybe if I roll this, it'll give a little bit of inspiration on, like, what could be something interesting that happens, like, why does this go poorly? Maybe it's not just so directly that he did a bad job. Maybe something happens in this moment that we need to deal with. So... Let's roll up a plot twist. The enemy gains new allies. Well, the number one enemy that we were talking about in that scene is Red Robert, which would be a little bit odd. I'd have to think of a way to justify that, because the whole point is we together were... Uh, we're going to be framing him for murder. So it seems unlikely that anything that would possibly happen would make Chops be like, I'm going to go squeal to Red Robert. Like, he doesn't like him anymore. But maybe there's some kind of eavesdropper or something? Like, what if... What if maybe we're not alone here? Well, it, it definitely wouldn't be somebody just in the room and obvious, because then Chops wouldn't have been so openly talking about their plan. Neither of them would be that openly talking about it. But maybe somebody indeed is passing by and hears so overhears something through the window. And, uh... See what kind of person they might be. With a character description. Or character role. A traitor. Okay, that, that can make sense. Maybe somebody was coming by that uh, was going to deal with Chops and be like, hey, I've got some, like, maybe you'd be interested in buying some of my merchandise. You're, you're a, like, some, like, medical supply salesman or something. Be like, oh, boy, have I got the calipers for you? Or whatever. Calipers? Sure. Um, so, yeah, so, some, like, tradesman is coming by ready to, to do business and, like, happens to overhear this conversation. And, uh... Knows that it's juicy and does not want to interrupt and starts eavesdropping. And, uh... I think is going to spread that word. Like, it's going to gossip about it. And uh, that, that Coyote and Chops were talking about, like, a plot to frame somebody for murder. And, uh... Yeah, word... 
Word is going to get around town, including to... Now, granted, Red Robert's gang is all, like, in jail right now. But I think even still, word will, will cross through the bars. Like, they'll, they'll know this was happening, and that might be of use to them later. Um, they might be able to parlay that into some kind of defense. But also... Is there... Is that, uh, is that enough of a price, is the question. Is there some other specific person that, like, where that could be more immediately, like, this is a problem right now? Maybe... Because I was thinking maybe Big Brother... Like, I, I guess I don't have to go directly. It doesn't have to be the enemy gains new allies. As long as that inspires me, it could be whatever. Maybe... Yeah, the, the thing that makes most sense to me... Rather than the enemy getting new allies. Like, so the word doesn't get back to Red Robert. That's not interesting enough to me. Um, I don't think you can do enough with that information for it to matter. But I think this word is going to get back to Big Brother. And uh, Big Brother is going to know that Coyote is maybe not making as much peace with Red Robert as he claimed that he was going to. And he, that was part of the deal. So, so yeah, uh, th that'll be the price that we pay there. Uh, and then the other price is really just, and he doesn't get healed. It's not helpful. Maybe he's literally not just, like, bleeding out right now, but he certainly didn't get, like, he's, his, his recovery is going to take longer. But that's all boring. Let's, let's move on. Let's, let's push this forward into what interests me, what I want to explore. How are we going to, how are we going to find this lake? So... We talked before about how there was this kind of, like, old religion. And, uh, that there were, that Roxy was, um, oh, you know, that would be perfect. Uh, it occurs to me, Big Brother, we can tie this all together, Big Brother was a former priest. So, I think Coyote He's got a few reasons to go visit him right now. He needs to talk defense strategies and stuff like that. <laughs> Your Iron Sworn is now on Switch. Uh-huh. Well, then I guess I got it. Look. Look, Z. I'm, I'm on Switch. Um. Anyway. Um, so Big Brother is, yeah, he's a, he's a former priest. We got a few, we want to talk defense strategies, but then also while we're there, be like, hey, maybe in your previous life, you knew a little bit something about this um, about this legend, or at least know where I can look. So yeah, let, let's do that. Let's. Cody leaves the dentist's office, not all, not as healed as he'd like to be, but at least vaguely feeling better, and uh, finds his way over to where Big Brother is. Um, let's see. Uh, let me roll up a like a location for them. I don't know, or uh, as usual, if you have any ideas about like where they should be, I don't want it to just be like, eh, they meet in a bar. We we do that a lot, but I want to, unless we randomly determine that, I want a location of where they'd be, uh, where they'd be having a conversation. Where this guy is a uh, a leader of some mercenaries, and I want it to be different from just like a bar or their hideout or something. Coast. Coast is the random thing that I rolled up there. Um, I could see us being near the coast of, like, a shallow river or something. One that's, like, really drying up. Um, yeah, maybe they keep, like... Because they, they travel around. Maybe they, they've got some some people that are going to be coming in from, uh, from upriver. And... Uh, yeah, because Coyote asked him to um, to help help with the fence and defense and Big Brother's on progress. So yeah, they're like they're waiting by the coast of this river because uh, some of these some of these other people are going to be coming by uh, any moment now. And uh, Big Brother and Big Brother's going to help them unload, and then we'll be able to to talk defense, and Coyote will be able to. He'd say everything that he needs to, that he can about, like, what, what they're going to be facing. Um, so they're, like, both standing side by side, sort of looking down, looking down the river, just seeing if they can see anything. There's a lot of silence. Um, 
you know, just the lapping of water. But eventually, uh, eventually Coyote says to him, So, uh, how, how, how many are coming? Well, I sent the word out that we're going to need people to return home, and I guess the number that comes is going to be an indication of how much they still see me as their leader. We'll find out together, won't we? I'd like to say a fair number, and I'm hoping for several dozen. We'll see. Oh, good, good. And uh, if they're, if if they don't see you so much as uh, the leader anymore, well, if they don't, it'll probably still be four dozen. But four dozen minus one by the time it's all done. Ah, yeah, I uh, gotcha. So. Why? Why is uh? Why is that in question? Why? Well, I I was under the impression that when I, when I asked for the for your help, I don't know. I thought maybe you were a little bit closer to them than. First of all, I thought they were more in town, but no, no we we go our separate ways from time to time and. Kind of have parts of us here and parts of us there. It's only in big moments like this when we gather all of us together in one place. And distance apart can, can make the relationship frayed. It happens. I don't really hold it in contempt or anything, but you never know. It has been a while. Right. I was hoping you could, uh... Hoping you might help me with, uh... Something... Kind of related. But mostly not. Well, is it related or is it not? It's, uh... I hope to make it related. I'll, I'll put it there. You led a life before you became, uh, you. <laughs> I've always been me. Yeah, but you, you know what I mean. When you were a, uh, different sort of leader. I forgot if, do we have a, uh, a name for this religion real, real quick? Um, I don't think we do. Yeah. Nothing about that. Yeah, we just there there just is this religion that some people are following. Um but we don't have a name for it. So I'm sure Coyote would say would use some relevant word. Uh you wouldn't be skirting around the issue entirely. That's just me skirting around it cuz I don't know what to say. Oh, what to call it yet. Um When you were when when you were a leader did you ever hear about a place called the, um, the Forgotten Lake? Oh, no, oh, certainly. It comes up. Why? I would have imagined that you would, you of all people would consider it more of a tall tale or metaphor at best. I guess I'm hoping right now. You ever talk to somebody that, uh, you ever talk to somebody that has just so much faith that it kind of shakes your own lack of faith? You see in their eyes and there's just so much conviction that it, it shakes your own disbelief? I'd say that I've my path in life has gone a little bit more in the opposite direction. I mean, look at me. Really? My lack of faith? Uh, I mean... In fairness, I don't know you that well, but I I never got the impression that that was the problem, you know? 
I thought that maybe your uh, your fall from grace, if you will, was differently motivated. I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah, all right. I, I, but but anyway, what what do you know about the Forgotten Lake? Um, and then Big Brother gives him a little bit of a cold shoulder and just goes, I will, says, that could be a rather long discussion. And I think I see them coming soon. Let's not get into it. And Coyote needs to, like get him to open up a little bit. I think what we're seeing right now is that indeed this information has spread to him a little bit and he knows that Coyote's kind of gone back on their word and he's a little disappointed in him. Like, he's not actively just like, I'm going to be hostile to you now, but is upset that Coyote seems to be just, it's a kind of a one-directional relationship right now is the way he feels. Um... And doesn't especially appreciate that. So is being a little bit withholding. And we're going to see if Coyote can get him to open up. And be like, what? Nah, there's, I, I, I just need a, it's, it's not all, all that much. But you could really, you could really help me out. Come on, I, I, what, what could it take? A minute? I'm, you're, you're good at this. Well, we're going to see if we can get him to open up. We're going to use a second compel move. And, uh, this, it's, again, it's with heart. He's not really lying or anything. Just being, yeah, come on, we're, we're buddies. We can do this. And I'm trying to remember. I think we did indeed make this guy our third bond. I think. Because we start off the game with three, and in this case, I didn't assign any of them, except for my dad. I had dad, who is dead. Um, we had angel face, and now we, I, we had a third slot, and I... Can't remember if I actually made him a bond or not. I'm going to assume I did, and uh, if not, he is now. So, he's one of my bonds. We're, we're rolling heart, we're adding a plus one, because we do share a bond. And uh, we're going to see if we can get him to just be like, hey, the, the goal of this is get him to open up. Tell me about this, uh, tell me about the Forgotten Lake. And uh, let's see how this goes. Strong hit. There we go. Just barely, but we got the strong hit. That's 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 what you get when you use your highest stat with a um, uh, with a plus one. Okay. Now I think we can start getting this to take off a little bit more. I know this has been a little bit of a slow start to this session, but kind of rolling with it and figure out how we're going to get this going. So on a strong hit, we get our plus one momentum. So build that up a little bit more. And uh, we are indeed, this time, using it to make a gather information. So make that move now and add a plus one. So the gather information is basically, tell me everything you know about, like, where I can find... Like, how can I find the Forgotten Lake? Let, let me know what you know about it. I need to find this place. If it's real, even if it's not, I need to know where somebody would search for it. Um, so we're, search we're, not we're asking questions... Uh, so we roll our plus wits, which is a shame, because it's terrible. But, uh, we are indeed asking it of a person where we, with whom we share a bond, so we add the plus one. Now, we are not investigating a devious scheme, because it's not about where would somebody hide a body this time. Like, yes, we are doing it so we can find the, where somebody's gonna throw a body, but that's not what the question is. It's about, like, hey, you're a man of this religion, what does this religion say about this place? So it's, it's, we don't get to use that trickster ability. But the plus one we just got from that uh, compel will help us here. Hopefully. Let's see. Oof. Does not help enough when we roll a nine and an eight. And that, yeah. Just rolled really, again, rolled really high on the action dice. Or on the, uh, on the challenge dice. And then as low as possible on the action die. So... I'd say no dice, but that's literally untrue. We have a miss on gather information. So, on a miss, your investigation unearths a dire threat or reveals an unwelcome truth that undermines your quest. Um, honestly, I think this would be where... Like, maybe... Maybe we tie us together with the miss from, from before, and, like... It... 
it's becoming clear that this is a bigger question. And I think Big Brother snaps a little bit uh, with like kind of what I was saying before, like how this is a really one directional relationship. And uh, yeah, it just pushes him over the edge. And this guy is a towering figure. He's not called Big Brother, ironically. Uh, his brother from being a brother of the cloth, but he is a big man and way bigger than the kind of like Weasley. I've described him a, like think Steve Buscemi is kind of where how you should imagine Coyote Devereaux. Um, so very much overpowered by this guy uh, who is like just looming over him and they're all alone out here. Um, so yeah, I, th I think Big Brother snaps a little bit and uh, so we need this to be an actual threat per the move. Like so this, it can't just be the appearance of like, oh God, he's, he's being intimidating. He's got to do something. Uh, unwelcome truth that undermines your quest. Yeah, I think the unwelcome truth here would would have to be something along the lines of how um, they're like not going to help him out. Like, so Coyote says, like, I don't even see him along the horizon. Like, we got we got plenty of time. All of that. I think that's when Big Brother says. Uh, You're always at, you're always asking questions, Coyote, and always asking things from me. Get my people to help me. Tell me about your past. Tell me about the Forgotten Lake. Well, you know what? Friendship goes in two directions. You can't always just be taking from me and acting like it's okay. The worst part about it is you don't even seem to notice that you're doing it. It's just, you're selfish, Coyote. And if you... I heard... <laughs> you try this. <laughs> no problem, Z. I know about your plans with Robert. Don't even try. Like, Coyote has, a, like, an instinctive tr attempt to deny it. It's like... Don't. Just don't, Coyote. When I said I would help you, I was very, very clear about the one simple thing that I needed. I told you to make peace. And find out you have a, you have a gunfight in the street with, with Robert and the gang. You get them thrown into jail. And then I hear that you're planning on framing him for murder. What part of that shows to you that you have any respect for me and what I want? I'm standing by my word. I told you I would ask for help. And the only reason I'm standing by it is because it's too late. The word's out. They're coming anyway. So I might as well. But you come here and, and after completely betraying my trust, you ask for more? You try and just have this friendly conversation like you're not a complete shithead? No. I don't want to help somebody who's going to treat me that way. There's things you don't know. Yeah, I, I lied, I've lied a bunch of times, but I lied that day. I didn't have any intention of making peace with Red Robert. But you want to know why? First, I got to ask you. Why are you more willing to be friends with a person like him? What? Why can he? Why can he be the type of person he is, and you're okay with it? And I can't be the type of person I am. Do you have any idea the type of things he gets up to? Do you have any idea what he's just done? Welcome, General Kalumi. Do you have any idea what he's? Why? I'm so after him. And why I'm not going to apologize for anything I've done. 
It's a lot of questions there. Which one do you want me to answer first? I don't know. Let's just start with why. Why does he get a pass and I don't? We go back. How far back do, you, do the two of y'all go? He doesn't get a pass. He... Our relationship is different. It's more upfront. I know he's not a good person. I don't demand that. Do you think all the people who are coming in from the river are good people? Would you have asked for them if they were? No. I deal with bad people, but they don't pretend to be something else. That's where you... That's where I have a problem with you, Coyote. I... If you're gonna be... Just be honest with who you are to me. I can't have it any other way. The fact that we go back so far just makes it worse. We are friends. That's why I expect more from you. It's not a betrayal if you don't have that level of trust and care to begin with. But what? What do I not know? Why, why is it okay? Why, why are you not going to go back on any of your choices with Red Robert? You were saying? The reason I want to find out about the Forgotten Lake is because one of Robert's crew, I'm sure you saw, not all of them are in jail. You know the guy who's missing. Insert nameless name. We, we don't know his name because they're all just a bunch of mooks. I'm sure you noticed somebody was missing. You know where he's going? He's going to find that forgotten lake. You know why? Why would I know any of this? Get to the point. The reason he's going to the forgotten lake is because Robert killed my father. And fearing for what's going to happen if anybody finds out, his buddy is taking my dad's body to the Forgotten Lake so he can get rid of the evidence. How do you... How do you know any of the... Or, no, he probably wouldn't say that. He just heard that uh, his father was murdered, so I'm pretty sure you'd have at least... Be at least a little bit taken aback from that. Or Willie. We haven't rolled in a little while. We could do another compel out of this to just turn this into, like... How well are these words going to soften him up a little bit more and just be like, Hey, dude, it's... I'm sorry, but... Or... Is that kind of invalidating what we already did? Yeah. No, I, I think he's a little bit too angry right now. Um, the, that previous miss, I don't want to just override it with nothing. Um, yeah, I, I think he's... He's just going to be... Just, Coyote, stop. Stop spinning all of these lies and just trying to get out of a bad situation by making it more complicated. I don't believe you. I don't know that I would have believed this even if I hadn't caught you in your previous life. It, it's absolutely ludicrous. When my friends get here... My friends. When my band gets here, we'll talk strategy. But then I want you to go. And I don't want to see you anymore after that. We'll be done. I don't want to leave it that way. We've, we've gone through too much. I, I know there's something I can do to make this up to you. And I want you to tell me what it is. All our history, I feel like you owe me that much. Let me make it better. It's not going to be to leave Robert alone. That's, that's outside of what I can deliver. But there's somewhere there's something else I can do to show you that I respect our friendship and I'm not going to let, let it just go away. And this is the new compel. Because it's 
how to can, tell me something that can make it better. Um, and what I really want to angle for here is eventually there's a move called Forge of Bond. Uh, wait, sorry, not Forge of Bond, Test of Bond. Actually, this is uh, this is where, this is right now. Test your bond. When your bond is tested through conflict, betrayal, or circumstance, roll plus heart. That is absolutely what's happening right here. Our bond is very much being tested through betrayal, uh, and thankfully, heart is our uh, is our best stat. So we're we're good at garnering sympathy here. Um. So I'm going to use this to determine whether or not he's going to be able to um, like. Does the friendship last? Can we can we work this? So test a bomb. We have test your bomb. We have not ever rolled this before. So we're gonna roll our plus heart and uh, see what happens here. Okay, so we have a weak hit, and yeah, nothing we can do about it. So on a weak hit, your bond is fragile, and you must prove your loyalty. Yeah, it was pretty much where we were heading with this anyway. Envision what they ask of you. This is perfect. This goes along with the fiction we were setting up. Uh, and do it, or swear an iron vow. If you refuse or fail, clear the bonds and pay the price. All right, so our bond is on the line for this, which is absolutely what's happening here. Um, I have, I'm not sure what he'd be asking for, because remember, the make peace with Red Robert is off the table. Coyote is very much... Uh, I, that is That I can't do for you, but... There is something. We didn't get a miss. The bond doesn't immediately break. Because that would be, they have no interest in maintaining the friendship, clear the bond, pay the price. Like, that would happen right away. There's some spark left over in Big Brother that's, uh, that also wants Coyote to be able to make it better. He needs Coyote to make it better, but he does want success. We need an oracle for this, or inspiration from chat, but... Y'all are like my secondary oracle. So, character goal, we could certainly roll that to find out something else that's important to Big Brother. Now, I do have a little something in mind for Big Brother, but while relevant, it wouldn't make sense for this. Um, I've always, basically, I've always had the idea that part of the reason why a brother is so hurt in this is that there's a, this, this bromance has a little bit of, you know, romance to it as well. Uh, I think it's, I don't know if it goes both ways. Uh, in, in the sense that I don't know if it's reciprocated or not. I think that at the very least, Big Brother feels more strongly about Coyote than Coyote does about Big Brother. But there's a little bit of romantic background to them. They may have explored it a little bit in the past. I don't think it's going to be related to what he needs from Coyote, though, because he, he doesn't trust him. So why would he be like, you know, be my boyfriend, then it'll all be better. No, you don't ask that of somebody when it's all about you need to find, you need to prove that I can trust you. But let's see, there's something else that's important to him. To prove worthiness. Great. Thanks, Oracle. That I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, I guess that me he's trying to prove his own worthiness. Um... I can't think of a way to make that make sense here, though. Like, a way that Big Brother would prove, like, get Coyote to help him prove his own worthiness. Like, there's, that would mean there's something that Big Brother can't quite do and it would need Coyote's help. Um, and based on my vision of the character, that just doesn't make sense. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, if there's anything in particular you have questions about, feel free to ask. But... That oracle, unfortunately, wasn't especially helpful. I'm going to try and roll one more, which is, I'm going to roll the plot twist one to see if maybe that'll have some different inspiration on, like, uh, something that you can do. Your actions benefit an enemy. It's, it's like I'm opening a fortune cookie every time. Um, I feel like this keeps pointing back towards the, like, Coyote claims, like, uh... Making peace with the Red Robert is off the table, but Big Brother see like it suggests that he really does want that, um, or at least something tangential. 
God, I, I feel more stuck on this than I've ever been on other roles before. But there's, God, there's something that he... Some way, like how, the, it's the big question in, in like life in general. How do you prove to somebody that they can trust you other than time? Um, and we could tie this into Coyote's plan to become an Iron Sworn because that's a, it's basically like a paladin of this Ironland Western frontier area. Um, so yeah, how about this um big brother just kind of shakes his head and goes i wish i could tell you but i don't i don't know how to tell somebody how to tell how to show that they're trustworthy you just it's something you either feel or don't feel be an honest man coyote Find your path towards that and find a way to show me you've changed. That's all I have for you. There's no one, no one quick thing that I need from you. Why would I? I get by plenty well on my own. And I don't need your help to help me fight off a man or... It's always what you're asking of me. So just be better. Well, I am working on it. I know it doesn't always look like it, but I am. Talk to Angel Face sometime. Trust her, right? You know that she's very much a gal of her word talk to her about our conversation last night she'll uh I think she'll she'll set you straight and let you know that I'm working on it and I will make things better fine and then uh I think the the kind of the the little boat comes in or the probably series of boats come in with their little just like sea caravan of uh these these other mercenaries in his group they arrive and um I want to I want at the very least one other just kind of major sort of like some major NPC with them uh, I don't want them to all just be like I was, I'm not going to make every single one of them a character because Jesus, there's I, we talked about how there might be dozens of them, um, but I want at the very least one other kind of like secondary leader that potentially is in a little bit of conflict with uh, with Big Brother because he had, he had reason to think that there's a that they might kind of split ways a little bit, so I'm going to Oracle that to get a character description, somebody else that um, is of significance coming on these boats. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's an RPG called Iron Sworn, and we're we're using it to to craft a story in a sense. Sick. Oh, now that would be actually really interesting for the whole group. Um, yeah. Okay. So the group arrives, but there's been like some sickness spreading with them. So like, that would be a good thing to have to take care of for this next kind of step along the way at defending Jibbit against the Shadow Bears is... Sure, all reinforcements have arrived. They are filled with the plague. Um, I don't think they have, like, the plague from back east. Because uh, we talked about that in the very beginning, how there's just, like, this horrible sickness in the cities. Uh, that is the reason why people came out here. They're, they're escaping from that. They don't have that. Oh, if only because I don't think they we have a good enough cure for it. Um, and I don't want it to be simple enough to, to figure out a cure for it. Oh, cool. Yeah, that uh, I'm sure that, that must be fun, Kenobi. Um, but they have some bad sickness. They are clearly not in fighting shape right now. It's something they'll get over, but maybe not 
quickly enough. Um, and so there's just like this, this person comes out just utterly covered in like these sores and like oozing like nodules on his face and stuff and has this horrible hacking cough uh, as he like stays on the boat. He's like calling out from the boat and uh, as they like stop and reach the dock and uh, just goes like <coughs> stay back stay back Now all my snuffling will make sense. You don't want to... You don't want to catch what we've got. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What... What happened? It was a... Ugh. It's all of our supplies... I think got a little bit tainted. <coughs> but we're here. How long? How long do you have before we gotta be in fighting shape? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It could come any day now. What do you? What do you have? Um. And the, the guy whose name we don't have just says, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Nobody here is a doctor, but it's something bad. And, uh, he just, like, runs over and starts, like, runs the other side of the boat and just starts vomiting over the other side. Just go, kind of goes, huh, uh, that was not quite what I was hoping for. I'll be back. I gotta get somebody who can, who maybe knows something about this. Because I'm pretty sure I can fight better than they can right now. Uh, I'll be back. And he like runs off and it's like, uh, it's just like, duh, God. Because whatever it was out there was just utterly disturbing. Just like, and as I mentioned, like, leaky kind of nodules and stuff. Uh, it looks very contagious. And, uh... Yeah, Coyote's gonna need to get a doctor for them to at least diagnose, like, how do we take care of this? Um... So we could tell our, we haven't ever established like a real doctor in town. We've only ever had this dentist. And because I see this town as being pretty small, like, I think that's what they've got. Like, he's the closest person to medical that they have. Anybody else is just not around. Uh, you'd have to go like the next town over. Um, but Coyote's going to go back to Chops' place and see if he can convince him to be like, hey... There's some people that are looking really bad. Maybe you... In fact, I think we should see him right now. Like, it's just, like, hat in hand. Just, like... Look, I'm trying not to push my luck, but... This actually isn't so much for me as there's a... Some stuff I don't want to spread in the town. And uh, there's some people who just came on the boat that... They're looking pretty sick. I was hoping maybe you'd, uh able to identify what in the hell's wrong with him it looks pretty bad i mean i mean really bad <laughs> you have a moment and um, we're gonna roll a compel to see can coyote get chops to just go down and check out uh, check them out give his medical opinion on what might be wrong with them and uh let's see making a heart roll hey there we go a strong hit so it goes goes well. We're, we're doing well on the compels. It's usually what happens afterwards that doesn't go so well. So we build our momentum once more. It get, we still get that plus one. He will do what we want. Apparently, uh, the apparently what we were saying earlier about the uh, 
how like we we've got all the more reason to like Robert's actually a murderer. Like he's he's indeed been pacified, and I guess it's his the doctor in him knows like he's got a responsibility, and also does not want things spreading in town. So yeah, he'll he'll do what I want. So we like it's a real quick thing. Like if we were watching this on TV, that would have been just like one shot. I'm just like. Uh, it's just on Coyote the whole time, and then we cut back to the docks, and Chops is there this time. And, uh... He, he... He, like, is approaching, and the... I think he's, he's... He's got, like, some kind of bag with him or something. And, uh... Big Brother walks up and, and tells him, like... I wouldn't go much further if I were you. They're... I've never seen anything quite like it. Well, it's part of the job. I have protection. He like puts on some kind of mask or so. Actually, I don't even know if they have like a full on mask or just like he just covers his mouth with like a rag or something. And uh, I have the proper protections. The only way I can help them is if I see. And, uh... He'll, like, go to the boat. And I'm not gonna, like, have him roll or anything. I just... He, he will diagnose what's necessary. He'll, he'll find a way. He'll figure it out. And, uh... Because I don't want this game to just be like, Okay, then we ask this person to diagnose them. And then I want this person. Like, just whatever. They... Chops will figure it out. He'll come back and report, uh... Let's see what what could they have it see it sounds like based on the way i was playing him it's some kind of horrible like it definitely gets inside your lungs and like it's some kind of breathable thing it talked about being from tainted supplies some kind of mold based thing makes sense to me that like bad food that just kind of spreads around and like releases some spores into the air um it's like a, a bad kind of mold that then I think it, like, the nodules kind of, like, is the fungus then, like, blossoming. Like, it grows in your skin and then releases a new, like, when it's ready, kind of... It, it leaks out a little bit constantly, which is just because of your your body's, like, natural defenses against it. Like, your your blood is trying to take care of the the uh, this infection. But then, eventually, if it's not treated in time, it just... It'll it'll release a new set of, series of spores once they're germinated, and uh, it kind of spreads from person to person. And so, what we what would we call this kind of like mold? The uh, I don't know, just like the gray mold or something. Um, just call it something like that. I think it's called that because like your your skin also just becomes like really ashen and gray looking. Um, yeah, well, he probably has some kind of fake Latin-sounding uh, longer name for it, where it's like, uh, you know, they 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 appear to have gonocrypolosophila, I don't know, but gonocrypolosophila, but known, known more colloquially as the Grey Mold. No doubt they were right. Some manner of their supplies must have been tainted and... Being in such a confined space, it is spread around. It's not actually too hard to keep it from spreading. However, when you're on a when you're on a small boat, it moves around rather easily. So, uh, what 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 do we do to take care of it? I need these guys. And but how long? How long it take to? Sh he's like just rattling off questions. What do we do to take care of it? I mean, how how long? How long do we have? I, I need these guys in fighting shape as, as quickly as possible. What what do you think the uh what was what's the prog tell tell me about it. And uh There's not really a direct move for the like I could it's not that he won't tell him, so I don't need to make a compel. It's more just like randomly determining what would need to be done. Now of course this is not the result of a miss or anything. This is all just the result of character description. So it does, it, I don't think it needs to be that bad. I'm not making any, like an entire quest out of this. Um, I think it's... 
it's it's just a quick milestone along the way where uh let's see i want to use another oracle to try and inspire like what sort of thing would take care of this um I'm going to roll Mystic Backlash. I'm not making... It's not going to be a mystical type of thing, but I'm hoping that maybe something in here might be more able to inspire kind of a like, oh, this sort of thing would treat it. I may be completely off base. I don't remember what's in all these generators. You were tormented by... Okay, yeah, it's definitely on the Mystic side. But something from your past... Um... We could make it really simple, actually. I think it's less about the... Uh, it's not like, oh, pick this particular flower and then brew it into a tea. I think it could be something more along the lines of... It's actually really simple. It's... The problem is that most people don't want to go through with the treatment. Because with enough bed rest, you will... The, the spores run their course and they release and... Move on to a new host. It's really not too bad. But if that could take a matter of weeks, if you want it to be done more immediately, it is possible. But most people don't take much of a liking towards heating up an iron rod and burning every single one of the sores out of their face down to the root. It's usually pretty deep. I'll do it. But good luck convincing them that they're more that they want that more than just waiting it out for a few weeks. Let me know what they decide. You clearly know where to find me. And with that, he's uh he's off. So the uh, I think what's important here is indeed this next milestone about defending Jibbit is like he needs to get them in fighting shape in time. A few weeks. We don't know when the Shadow Bears are coming, but that will not be quick enough. So Coyote needs to convince them that indeed, like, they have a deal, they came here for a reason, and that reason is for nothing if they're going to be lying in bed for the next couple of weeks. They, uh, they are, they are contractually bound to do what they can to get themselves in fighting shape or provide somebody else who is. Harumph. Um, so Coyote is going to be, uh, he's going to go onto that boat. You know, he, he made a promise, and he's proving this to so many people. Uh, he said, uh, like, he starts heading towards it, and Big Brother is like, Whoa, what, what are you doing? You don't want to catch that. Eh, you, you heard him. It's not all that bad. He just went in there with a rag over his face. I, uh, and Coyote takes his little head bandage and just lowers it over his mouth. And goes, I got, this, this should be just as good. I gotta, I gotta talk to him. Be safe, Coyote. And Coyote, uh, hey, climbs up aboard the boat, not in the best physical form doing it. Like, it's a little awkward watching it, but he clambers over the side. And, uh... Hey! Hey! Guys. Is this the kind of... Is this what I get when I ask for help from the, uh... From the blah 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 gang? Who knows? I ain't... I never have names for anything. Um, some, if anybody has a name for a, uh, just a general, just mercenary band kind of name, um, nothing too flowery, but, uh, it wouldn't be run by any particular one person, so it wouldn't be named after a person. Um, is this the kind of service I get when I call for you? I needed help. Couple, of, the doctor says that in a couple of weeks you'll be fine. But actually, no. Coyote, why would he, why would he be honest with them about this? That does not seem like the best way to get them to agree to have hot pokers stuffed in their face. When he could just lie and say, "Doc says this is what's necessary." I want to, like I wanted to warn you now, but you are. I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, he's just gonna lie to him. And just be like, so rather than take the tag of, like, you owe this, he'll, he'll just say, 
So I just spoke to the doctor. And, uh, well, he told me what y'all need. I'm afraid it's pretty serious. And if you let those... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, Siwawa? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you miss it, they basically got these horrible fungal sores that are, uh, in their face that... Apparently, like, they'll, they'll be fine if they just rest them out, but... The, the quick way is to burn them out at the root so that they can't spread and, block, like, release their spores. Um, it literally just popped up. Yeah, so they do not... It is not necessary for this to happen, but uh, we're going to lie and say that it is. Because the doctor says that uh, those all those sores that you got, all the nodules, they all got to be burned out. Otherwise, they're just going to keep spreading. You're going to go down, down, down. Thankfully, apparently once that happens, you should recover pretty quickly. So, uh, what do you say? Come off this boat and come, come get the treatment right now? And so basically, this role is going to be how much do they believe him, or do they get a sense that he's not being fully, like, forthright with them. There is more to this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll this compel to be like, hey, let's go get this burned out right now, get you guys in fighting shape. And, uh... It's going to be through lying or swindling. And we're going to get our trickster uh, plus one for that. So Shadow with a plus one. Let's see. Do they do they believe? Are they going to come along and go get their sores burned out right away? We have a weak hit and one that we can't deal with with momentum. So uh, let's see. Weak hit. As above, so we still got our plus one on momentum. Uh, they ask something of return and vision what they want. So it could well be something along the lines of how like okay, doctors don't do this for free. We'll like we'll do it, but you're responsible for our treatment. We like basically, yeah, the the guy just goes <coughs> You know, we only got this Coming to your beck and call. If I had just stayed home, none wouldn't have happened. It's the way I see it. You pay for our treatment. <coughs> now let's go. And, uh, so yeah, Coyote is gonna have to pay for this. Um... Now, his supply is not very great, but he does have some. And, uh... I guess there's no, like, pay-for-something move in this. Your supply is either reduced or not. Um... But I think Coyote, like, he knows he's barely scraping by. I don't think he... I don't think it's... We can assume that he would be able to, uh actually pay for all of their uh, all of their medical expenses, like this operation on, like, four dozen people. I, I don't think he has that kind of scratch. But he'll agree and be like, yeah, of course, I'll take care of it, figuring that he'll think of something along the way. And I think what he thinks of as they, uh, he says, all right, I'll, uh, I'll fetch the doctor, because there's no way you guys are walking through town. You, uh, you might want to Drink up. Uh, whatever you got around. Because I'm not thinking this is going to feel all that good. You're going to want to be pretty out of it. Start drinking now. I'll be back. And Coyote goes to Chops. And is going to basically just try and convince him like, Hey, buddy, you want to do this for free because we're still working together and I'm totally going to help you prove that Robert's a murderer, like, that's, we're, we, we need each other's help here, right? It's, you, we, we can just put this on my tab kind of thing. Um, so I'm not going to roleplay that scene out, because I want to get this moving. I don't want to spend this whole session on this sort of thing. I really want to explore more about this lake. So I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up the pace here a little bit and do some rolls a little bit quickly. Uh, so we do one more compel that's really basically just folding into that, like, 
hey, we we don't need to pay for this. This has already come in. They agreed. It's This is all just on my tab. So Compel with a heart. Uh, he's not lying or anything. He really doesn't mean it. Let's see. Does Chops agree? Weak hit. Oh, man, that 10. No way that we can cancel that out. Uh, weak hit on the compel. So, again, they'll do it, but they ask something of return. Um, build up on my... All right, so what would he... What would Chops want in return that's not literal payment? It would have to be something along the lines of the... Uh, Like, their plans have got to pick up the pace or something. Uh, oh no, you know, we, we talked earlier about how because Chops... Yeah, so, so Chops just goes... There is a different... I actually... He, like, chuckles at the idea that, like, they already... They're square. Goes, we perhaps see this in a different way, but... As it turns out, there is something that you can help me with. You can pay for it another way. We mentioned previously about how Robert... Well, in order to frame him, we would need some dead body, yes? I may have acquired one already thinking that you would have been ready with your part more quickly or rather no i guess he uh yeah th thinking that you had run out on the deal i may have brought the plans ahead i was no longer waiting for you to bring the right person by. I, f I forget what their actual plan was. I know the idea was that Chops was going to kill somebody, and then I guess Coyote was going to help him plant the body, maybe, or something like that. Uh, yes, I, I grew impatient and thought that you were ready, and I was wrong. There is something in the back of my shop that I'd rather not be here anymore. And it sounds like we don't need it, since he actually did kill somebody. Less risky to go with that than to try and frame him. So, are you asking me to help dispose of a body? I'd never use such words, no. But... Go into the back of my shop. And take your pick. There's a... There's a package for you. Get it out of here. And then I will go back to the ship. So, basically, uh, indeed, get rid of a body, then I'll, I'll help you out. Uh, I think if I do this, uh, oh, never mind, that was, I, I realized that the framing for, a like, this wouldn't really be a milestone for anything anymore. Or actually, yes, it would, it would be the defending gibbet against the shadow bears, because this is getting them healthy. Um, so Coyote indeed goes back into this, like, Part of the shop where it's just like, there is a, I think he, he goes, he like opens up this door and as he does, this like mattress falls down against the ground uh, with a big thud on these floorboards and like he jumps back a little bit. And then as soon as he walks in, it's just like, the mattress falls and the door opens and this wafting horrible odor comes out because... This body has been here for who knows how long, and nothing was done to uh, preserve it in any kind of way. So it's just like, just flies all over the place, just maggots in the skin, and uh, just a horrible odor. 
that apparently, like, he supposes the mattress is probably just a, an additional barrier against the door to try and keep the smell from wafting out from, like, under the crack. And, uh, gets in and is like, oh, oh my god, uh, how, how? How do I get myself in these situations? I, I s soon as I'm an iron sworn, this shit stops. No more. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. He like looks around. He sees that there's a. Uh, he like goes back at the door and looks out the window and sees like it's gonna be a while before the sun sets. It is not dark outside. He does not want to be just parading this body through the streets. So I think Coyote is going to be one of the first people in this world to, like, basically indeed just butcher up a body. Like, basically cut him into pieces and, like, put them into a container. Uh, I don't think that typically happens in this world. It's a little early before people start doing the just, like, dismembering sort of tactic. But Coyote is a, uh, you know, he's a clever man. He realizes that a body would be too obvious, but he could just do that. Or, no, you know what? I don't know that he has the... His iron is so low, I don't think he has the kind of stomach for that. But I think he could indeed do the, like, I'm just transporting this rolled-up carpet somewhere. Oh, my God. Um, and so he is going to try and secure an advantage here on, like, how to get this body out without being noticed by looking around. He's going to use his wits to, um, which, unfortunately, to try and see if he can find something like a carpet or a rug or something that he could roll this body up in. And, uh, let's see here. <sighs> We're making the secure and advantage move. It is... Oh! No, I guess it is observation. It's, uh... He's gonna... So in instead of using our, in our wits, because we're terrible at that, we're gonna try and turn this into a hearts roll. And say that he's gonna... Convince the, uh... Convince Chops to let him... Like, he sees a carpet. Like, it's not too hard to find. Convince him to let him use that. So, uh... He, like, looks to, uh, to Chops and goes, like... Hey, uh, it should be a lot less likely to go the wrong way if I could maybe dispose of two things. Like, uh, I don't know, also that carpet, if you see where I'm going with this. And we'll, we'll see if he, if Chops indeed agrees that this is a good idea. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to make a heart roll. And, uh... There we go. Strong hit. Just what I was hoping for. So, we gain advantage. Choose one. Take control. Make another move now. Not a progress move. And add plus one. Or, prepare to act. Take plus two momentum. Um, our momentum's pretty high. I'd rather take the make another move right now with a plus one. So, yeah. We'll do that. Um, this is definitely a face danger roll. Because it's disposing of a body. Uh, in the middle, like, rolling up a body in a carpet and getting through, like, whistling, like, <laughs> and hoping that nobody sees us. So, this is definitely a, uh, stealth or, tr like, deception, stealth, or trickery. It would either, it's either shadow or edge. They're both the same stat, so it doesn't even matter. Because, like, this could be about just going through town quickly enough, but, eh, I think deception, stealth, or trickery makes sense, um... And that way, we can we can use our... Well, we'll be very good on this. So we have our plus one from the last roll. We have a plus one from Trickster, because we are facing danger by... Oh, no, we're not. We're, I guess we're not lying, bluffing, stealing, or cheating. We're just... We're doing something underhanded, but it's not a Trickster thing. So we just have our, our plus one, but we have Shadow. And here we go. Let's face danger. I hope this goes well for you, Coyote, but if it doesn't, this could take an interesting turn. Hey, look at that. A complete and utter miss. If only I had taken the momentum on that, I could have at least gotten a weak hit. 
But as it is, I can't do anything about it, and that is a miss. So, miss on a face danger. You fail or your progress is undermined by a dramatic and costly turn of events. Well, I feel like the uh, thing that makes most sense here would definitely be the, like, obviously somebody sees him along the way. He gets stopped by some law enforcement. Um, because the whole point of this was get out of town unseen. Does not happen. Uh, I think it's not Angel Face, but, like, whoever is actually, like, the usual law and order around this place, uh, the, like, Marshal, or Marshal equivalent, is, uh, kind of comes up to Coyote and wants to talk to him about, uh, like, Robert in the jail and everything like that, like, uh, so he just goes like, oh, hey, uh, hey, whoa there, whoa, slow, slow down, slow down. Coyote, was it? I've been, uh, I've been, been meaning to talk to you. Oh, well, what, what you got there? Hi, we, we're, can I think, or no, not what you got there, because it's obviously a carpet, but just like, oh, hey, that, that looks mighty, looks mighty heavy for somebody of your size. Let me, uh, let me help you out there. And kind of like, no, 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 I, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. Um. Look, I, I, I'd, lo I'd love to talk to you, but honestly, I'm kind of in a hurry right now, and uh, I, I, I gotta get... I'll, I'll talk to you later, and we'll see, basically, can Coyote get him to just, like, just go away, please? Uh, I, don't, I don't need your help. I'll talk to you later. I think this is more of a face danger than a compel, honestly, because it's... Sure, we're persuading him to go away, no questions asked, and everything, but I don't know, um... It seems more like facing danger with just lying. Um, Cause yeah, we're not like asking something of him or uh, getting him to do something in a real sense. We're getting him to not do something. I I, I think it's really just fast talking. Be like, sorry, I don't have any time. I I gotta. I really gotta run, and uh, just not even giving him a chance to respond. Um, and, yeah, we'll do the, uh, it's face danger with a deception stealth or trickery. It's basically the same role as last time, except the plus one that we get is from a different point. It's not that we're, uh, we, we don't have the plus one for a move, but we, our trickster one would affect us. Uh, cause he, he rattles off something about how, uh, like, he's late enough as it is, and, uh, and this, this carpet is, like, uh, it, sorry, I, I'm, sorry I'm really late, the, the, this carpet has got really specific, like, it's, like, the, it, care instructions, and if I, if they found out anybody else touched it, I'd be, it just, like, I, I'll talk to you later. He, like, he rattles it off and doesn't get too specific about it, because he doesn't want any more questions. And let's see, can he do this and get him to go away? Because if this goes poorly... I think that it will absolutely be that the body is found, uh, and this is going to take a very different direction. Come on. Okay, weak hit. Uh, I can't turn it into a strong hit. But a weak hit is not too bad. You succeed but face a troublesome cost, so choose one. You're delayed, lose advantage. All right, so it's, it's this classic one, which... Uh, which of our trackers goes down, basically. Um, I think enduring stress makes sense. Like, law enforcement comes, almost catches you in progress transporting a murdered body. Like, that, that is some super stressful stuff. So yeah, like, Coyote, it's going to make him question his choice a little bit as, like, he gets away, but he's like, oh my god, that's a way... Way too close. And he eventually you know, gets out of the desert and buries it somewhere. And we don't need to see exactly how that looks. Um, but just in the progress of, like, burying this body or, like, tossing it in some cave or wherever. It's like, Jesus Christ. Or whatever swear he would use that uh, is more appropriate to their religion. Too close. Too, what the hell was I thinking? I should have just waited till night. <sighs> Oh, I need to take, I need to, like, takes a moment, but he goes back to Chops, and, you know, he tells him the job is done, and Chops, like, great, I'll do it, 
Long story short, uh, they're going, the Shadow, not the Shadow Bears, the, uh, uh, the band of mercenaries is going to get treated. So let's fill in that next milestone on defending. There we go. They get their treatment. It's all taken care of. Um, right, so we don't have a lot of time left in the stream. It's kind of gone by. This has been one of those, like, not a lot of, like, we haven't, it's not like last session where we had some really interesting developments and, like, ways things were going. Uh, a little bit less has happened this time, but it's important groundwork for later. But I want to kind of end on one more type of, like, finding the lake. It's important. How do we, how do we make this happen? So we've, we've exhausted our big brother approach. Like, he's not interested in talking to us about it. I don't think there's anything I can do to change that. But somebody else must know. There must be a church in this town. Like, if, uh, I think that Coyote doesn't know where it is exactly or where they go, but he's going to go back to Roxy and tell her that he would like to, uh, he'd like her to take him to, ch to the church sometime. Like to go to a service. And, uh, Roxy is more than happy to, uh, like, she's a very religious person, more than happy to help somebody see the light and all of that. Um, now we remember she does not remember Coyote as being an underhanded person. We determined that randomly last time. Uh, but she's, like, excited to, uh, to bring a newcomer. That's, that's, like, one of her favorite things. And they, they go to the, to some service, like, she probably says something along the lines of, uh, how it's, you know, they do it on Sunday or whatever. Like, some day that's a little bit too far out, and Coyote's like, I got, uh, not to get bogged down in the details, but I got a little something on my mind right now. I was hoping maybe, is there a more soon service I could go to? I could... I could really use it. And, uh... I think she goes, oh, I... I didn't know it was that important, but... Sure, I can... I can take you right away. And, you know, they, they go to the church. And, uh, this is all just a long setup where eventually Coyote sits through some service. And, uh... Wants to speak with their leader. Because he figures the lead, there's a chance this leader has some kind of literature or knowledge about this place. And it's going to be go basically along the same lines as uh, his his attempts with Big Brother, except he doesn't share a bond with this person. But uh, after the service, I wonder if I can... Yes, uh, this game is called Iron Sworn. It is not out of the box a Western-style game, but I have sort of... It, it can play in a very in a number of genres pretty well. Out of the box, it's more, like, closer to, like, Viking-style fantasy, in a sense. Um, very low fantasy out in the, like, the wi untamed wilds. But uh, it works really well for Wild West as well. So we've done kind of, like, a more magical version of Wild West. Um, and, yes, welcome back, Roman. So, yeah, he's... A, I, I want to see if I can get a, like, uh, secure an advantage by just very nicely sitting through the service and being able to say something specific that he liked. Um, so it's basically just with charm, loyalty, or like he's gonna... No, it's, it's uh, not a video game or anything. It's it's an RPG available freely at ironswornrpg.com. Just a pen and paper thing. You can play it entirely solo. I don't know, no worries. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try and make the secure advantage move by buttering up the priest. Talking all about the parts of the service that we really liked. And, uh, how, you know, his sermon was just so uplifting, and it was just what you need to hear right now, and get him to be friends before he asks something of him. That's how we're going to secure this advantage. Let's see if it's, it's, uh, if it works. So we're going to make a heart move. With a weak hit, a pet, that nine. I always have one die that's just a little bit too high. Um, it's been my, my one thing about the game is, uh, much as there is the ability to manipulate things with momentum, it, all, it, it feels like I don't get to very... Like, unless you really build it up, it, like, never actually comes up. But I think that's by design. 
It's it's only really uh, if you get really lucky or once you've really been working towards building that momentum that you can truly use it. But anyway, we get a weak hit on securing advantage, which is fine. Uh, it just means our advantage is short-lived, take plus one momentum, which is cool. So it kind of works, but the uh, this this priest or whatever their role would be called is uh, it's a little bit busy. Like he's got other uh, they they've got other people to talk to. Let's uh, I think maybe this is a this leader might might be a gal. We could we could use another one of those. It's been been a while. I try and get at least a little bit of uh, remembering to keep some amount of like it's not all just a bunch of guys. I break that sort of default that's so ingrained in my head because um, it's a it's a bad default yeah let's let's make a gal and uh, let's get a description of her wary that's kind of interesting for a uh, for somebody that's like kind of a spiritual leader that she'd be uh, okay she's a very cautious person Maybe that's why the advantage is short. Like it doesn't, the buttering up doesn't work completely because Coyote is sort of a, a stranger. Um, I think she's got a very just like thin, long, like sort of hawkish nose. She has a very kind of like older librarian sort of look to her, like hair pulled up in a in a tight bun with like thin glasses and a and a thin nose. Very kind of cuts a very gaunt figure. Uh, I think she's she's pretty old, and it's not that she's unfriendly. But she just is not as quick to open up to people, even though, like, that would probably, like, she has to take in newcomers, but she's still just socially, it's hard for her to open up completely to strangers. Um, but she does her best, and she tries. Um, and so, yeah, I think Coyote, after buttering up her a little bit, is going to... So, oh, uh, Beanie, your theme is not going to play. I forgot to start up my bot. Sorry about that, but welcome to the stream. Um, the the bot is not running. I forgot about that. So eventually, like, he was like, I was, I was hoping maybe we could, uh, I had, if you had a moment, I've got some questions for you. Uh, maybe we could sit down somewhere? And I think the fact that she's, uh, the, the fact that she's wary... Ordinarily, I wouldn't make him make this a move, but because we've established this about her, I think she needs to be compelled to uh, even have this conversation to begin with. Like, this guy, he looks kind of shady. He's got his, like, we, it's, he's got that gold tooth that doesn't quite fit that he's always fiddling with. Like, he just, he cuts an underhanded figure. So he's, she, we're going we're gonna to make a compel here. Start up this conversation. Roll our heart Thankfully, he's good at winning people over. Or is he? Okay, we got a weak hit on that. And again, nothing we can take care of. Um, so it's as a bump, but they want something in return. So we, we build up our momentum once more, to, all the way to plus eight. So now it's getting a lot more likely to actually help us. But she wants something. Um, oh, what if... Uh, Yeah, may, maybe her. Maybe in this religion, the counsel of uh, of such a person is really only supposed to be available to um, like people of that faith, and he's not. Like he came to the service, but one way or another through the conversation, he she gets the impression like the way he talks or something is just clear to her that she's not that he doesn't seem like he's a member, and like there's some. Like, she wants him to convert in a more official way before he can get uh, official counsel. It's some kind of way, like, about the way that their covenant with the creator just... It only works in that way. Like, they... A path can only be set... It can only be seen for those that are, are close to, to his light. I don't know. She says something along those lines. And, uh... So, yeah, she'll, she'll do it, but only if, uh... Only if he converts, so that he can uh, she she can officially help him. So otherwise, it's just not allowed. Coyote is indeed not a member of their religion and recognizes that this would be a this is probably not a let's get this done in the next five minutes kind of thing. So 
He's going to do what he always does in this situation and lie and say, oh, what are you talking about? I've I've been a member since uh, forever. I'm just new to new to town. Like, that's why you haven't seen me here before. But no, no, I'm a. I'm all about the name of this organization that we still just uh, IRL have not named. Uh, I'm going to make a note to myself that there there's a couple of things that that's come up on and I really need to come up with these names. So this in particular looks like it's going to be coming up more. So need a name for this religion. I very well might be uh, putting feeling feed, feeling out for some inspiration on that on uh, on Twitter and Discord. Um, so need a name for this religion, but he's gonna lie and be like, "Yeah, no, I'm totally. I'm I'm a member of the flock. We can we can have it." And he, uh, I'm gonna see if he can secure an advantage with like having previously observed a little bit about how Roxy like th types of things that she's talked about in their conversation on the way order uh, on the way over to know like something he can say that better illustrates that uh, yeah he. He knows what he's talking about. If this were Burning Wheel, he'd be rolling a, like, religion-wise, or, like, doctrine-wise. Um, uh, anyway. Let me see just how bad it is what, if I make a miss on securing advantage. Okay, it could go pretty poorly. I don't know if this will be worth it, because, let's see, the... I could get either plus two momentum or plus one. Honestly, uh, I'm not going to do that. I think he'd be better off just trying to lie. My momentum is pretty high as it is. I think I have more to lose by trying to secure the advantage than not. So he thinks on that. He, he tells his lie, and we'll just see how well he can pull it off just by being shady. Shady with the shadow gets his plus one for being a trickster. And... Okay, he gets a weak hit that he can't quite make into that strong hit, even with a plus eight momentum. Just can't quite pull it off. Um, however, so this was a face danger, I think, is, uh, well, no, it's not risky or an, well, it could be, actually. Because it's not, he's not compelling her to do anything. Yeah, I, I guess it is kind of a, Face danger, the danger being that she's going to, like, kick him out of the church. And just be like, you know, I know that he's a liar and just won't harbor that sort of people. And she's just like, no, we're not having this conversation at all. So he gets a weak hit on it. Because there's no no take backs. And that means you succeed but face a troublesome cost. So again, it's lose one on one of these uh, meters. I'm going to lose from the momentum. I think it takes a little bit of time to prove it. She's got, like, a bunch of questions for him. Because, again, she's really wary of newcomers and she's got like something in her head's going off and says like i don't know and the lie he has to keep telling lie after lie after lie to make it work and like try and keep track of it and she has just a million questions about where he worships and the people and he has to keep dodging and weaving and everything but he eventually gets there and uh she she takes him into a, a back area we should have a name for this person as well so it would be sister something because we've we've determined that they still use that kind of nomenclature. Um, so the the leader of that religion that we will be naming eventually. Um, okay, we I just looked at the clock. I don't have enough. To, that'll be another thing that I'll be naming, but the sister, or no, I guess she would. Uh, not sister, but, like, the mo the mother would be more... Yeah, because she'd be higher up. Um, mother something. Uh, they're, they're in the back area. And they probably ease into it, but, uh, as she goes... Oh. What is it... What is it exactly that you hear about? Yeah, that's not quite, with the, not quite the right voice, but... What is it exactly that you're here about? Well, uh... This is gonna sound... Alright, so I've got... A friend of mine... Who, uh... 
I was hoping to bring him closer to the light, but he's not quite as devout as I am. Uh, I've, I've tried a lot of different tactics on this, and the standard approach of showing him the kind of kindness and mercy and the recognition of all the great things that the, the uh, that our faith can do, I don't know, that didn't really draw him in in the same way. I was hoping that maybe I could point him towards something that would fascinate him a little bit more. I remember, and I'll be the first to admit, it's been a while since I have gone back to read scripture, but I remember there being passages about some of the great foes of the, of, of the creator and the 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 threats from the from the undercity and one and i was i was hoping maybe uh maybe if i were able to fascinate him with that it could draw him in get his interest and that would open the door toward it's it's a, a long process but i'm not the most knowledgeable on it i don't want to waste your time you're you're too busy of a person but do you maybe have some books or something on the uh on the on the <clears throat> do you have any books about the about the the great fowls of the of the maker and uh obviously he's telling a big lie there's nobody that he's talking about but he's just trying to open her up to get her to give hand over some literature she has any 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 old books that cover things such as Gol, the Golnock. And uh, this one is going to be a compel, because the compel is, I want you to hand over this information. He's just doing it through lying. So it's another shadow move with a plus one. Some of these moves we make very often, as kind of happens in this game. Especially because you, you, when you have a tactic that works with your character, you want it to work. So we have plus seven momentum. It's decent. I have got good odds at being able to turn this at least into a weak hit out of a miss. So let's see. And a good thing, because there it is. There's a miss. And indeed, ah, if I had if I had just reduced one of my other tracks, I could have turned this into a strong hit. Unfortunately, momentum has to exceed the die, not meet it. So seven against seven. I really don't want this to be a miss. Because... We're running out of tax on, like, how Coyote's going to get this information. This is important to me. I am indeed going to burn my momentum on this to turn that into a weak hit. So i got to reduce this all the way down to plus one. That is my reset value. So when I burn momentum, I eliminate any die that is lower than that momentum. So lower than seven is the five. I pretend it just doesn't exist, which means we now have a weak hit. Which means, as usual... Um, they'll do it, but they ask something in return. So we need something that this person wants, and I'm going to do that through an oracle. So, she wants something. Oh my god, that's perfect! Oracle, it's like you've been listening, like, that is spot on. Spread faith. Who would have thought that the leader of this religion would have had that as a goal? Um... So spread faith in a particular way. Um, oh, what? Okay, I got it. I think that uh, she has... I got it. Okay. Roxy had indeed previously told her about Coyote. Like, or somebody... Somebody who overheard the conversation misheard like the conversation that coyote had with angel face about being an iron sworn they overheard pieces of it but misheard and got the impression that both of them were iron sworn already didn't hear all the rest of it um she'd had a conversation managed to like i like she thinks as a result that he is indeed iron sworn they talked about it she's heard about him but falsely she wants him to swear on iron that he will indeed uh see this through into, like, bringing the faith to this person. It's like, if I'm going, like, well, 
if I'm going to part if I'm going to part with this book, and I'm more than willing to do it for such a such a cause, I must have some kind of assurance that you will do what's necessary to indeed bring this soul into the light. I've heard great things great things about you, Mr. Devereux. And I know that you're a man that has the ability to give me the assur type of assurance I'm looking for. I will say it is a little bit unusual to find one of your sworn nature in the faith, but I suppose there's nothing in direct conflict. It just doesn't usually happen. But I know it's important to you, even if it's not important to our faith. Swear on iron to me that you will bring the faith to this person and not stop until you have reached it, and I will give you this book. Now, obviously, this puts Coyote in a little bit of a jam for a couple of reasons. One, no such person exists, so if he swore this vow, he could not possibly complete it. Because it is based on a person that is not real. Um, and two, he kind of promised uh, Angel Face that he would stop just swearing iron vows all the time because it's dangerous to do it before his training is complete. So I think what Coyote's got to do here... We've often talked about how he's got this little head bandage thing that he uses to fool people into thinking he's weaker than he is, though right now he actually is about that weak, looking at his health track. And he's got all sorts of little trinkets and stuff hidden up there in case he needs them. I think he's going to find something that is, uh, looks like it could be iron, but is not actually iron, so that he can swear on it. It's some other metal pretend that it's iron, and convince her that an iron vow has been made even though it has not. Um, so he's going to make a false vow. And, uh... I don't think any of my things would, uh, would help me here. Because, indeed, my, my right specialty is being a tailor, not anything else. So, again, this is there's not really any direct move to be like, do I have this or not? It's just... Do you, does it make sense? And I think it makes sense that he could find something that lo could look like iron. He's got something on his person. And really, the roll will tell us how convincing it is, whatever he found. So, this is a face danger. Because this will just completely cut off his, his route, if possible. Now, I'm worried about this, because indeed, we can't count on momentum anymore. That's not going to be able to save us. We just burned it. Um... I mean, I guess she already agreed to take to give him the book. So here's the here's the way I see this. I think she has indeed gotten out the book and put it on the counter and like handed it over to him. It's like mid handing over. So I think if this goes wrong, the book is out and he could get it, but he would have to steal it. Um. But she's like in the middle of taking it back. Like she's like, I you, know, you can't hold take it right now. This just occurred to me. You know, swear, swear to me first. Alright, so face danger. Come on. Is there anything else I can do? Is there any way that I can secure an advantage first? What could I... I think... Alright, I think I'm going to do it through heart. I'm, I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to have him do the butter-up tactic again, where he's going to uh, speechify a little bit and talk all about how uh, uh, how important this is to him, and that it's, it's barely even a request, um, because what greater cause could there be to, uh, to, to swear a covenant? And he'll, like, sway, he'll change from vow to covenant because it's got a little bit more of the, uh, the uh, religious connotations. Because she even mentioned how it's weird that he's a member of both. And, uh... He'll, he'll, he'll talk a little bit about how, um... In his view, that these, uh, these vows are, are sacred covenants that he has with the Maker. Or w with the Creator. And, um... And that he... Is... 
would be happy to hold, like, nothing would make him happier than to be able to do his part in spreading this faith and uh, bring him, enhance his virtue in the eyes of the Lord and uh, that it is not often that he gets to... So He even says, like, if you don't mind, I'd love to swear this vow back in the actual cathedral. It's not often that I get a chance to make that covenant in such a majestic place with such a direct conduit to the maker. I wouldn't want to pass it up. So we're going to see if he can secure an advantage that way by just kind of like praising her church and really leaning into the, of course, the Lord is great sort of thing before doing this lie. Um, so yeah, let's, let's make this heart roll. This is, this is for secure an advantage first. Okay, a weak hit, which is okay. It's just that the advantage is short-lived, which would mean we take plus one momentum, which is not great. Uh, like, it's it's not enough to help us, unfortunately. Like, it's, it's good for the long run, but our momentum is so low that uh, it, it will not matter just yet. Well, shit, I can't just keep spamming that. It doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to have to go into it and, and, and hope for the best. So face danger, he's going to make this lie. We got shadow with a plus one. There is literally no way my momentum could help me here. So come on, roll well. Oof. That is the opposite of what I was looking for. A complete miss and nothing I can do about it. So, indeed, she is on the ball. She is a wary person. She is observant. He is a stranger. This is twice that he tried to kind of, like, praise and butter up to uh, make her see, like, oh, no, like, don't pay too much attention to me. And she is on the ball every time. She is a pretty good judge of character, it would seem. And she, she sees through his bullshit and sees, like, like, she lets him finish the vow, and, uh, and then very sternly just says, That was not, that was not iron. And I want you to leave this place right away and never set foot in here again, that you would spin such a tale about your covenant with the Maker before lying? I can't believe that an Iron Sworn would, would make light of such an important thing. Get out. Then we basically have a, like, you know, the mother will remember this telltale sort of thing over her head right now. Like, this is going to forever shape her views on Ironsworn. Like, I think she used to think that the Ironsworn and, uh, and their religion could work side by side as, like, two different things, but not directly butting heads. Like, they're still both, wor both worthwhile. I think he has now soured her opinion on Ironsworn as a thing, that they are basically heathens and not actually of their word can't be trusted it's all just them promising things just to get what they want and they don't make good on it like he has soured this um so we talked about how he had one more possibility here he could try and just steal it from her the book is right there he does need it and he really needs this i yeah i I think that's going to be our, like, we're going to go out on whatever that happens here. She's an old lady. I think he's got to, he's got to try and steal it from her. Thankfully, this could be, this is indeed, um, I think this is just about his speed, really. And, uh, we're definitely going to get our trickster plus one, because for the first time we're doing it for stealing. Or maybe it's not the first time, I guess. But uh, we're going we're gonna to make this one final roll. So it's going to be edge, 
with a plus one. As he tries to just snatch it out of her hands and run off before she can do anything about it. And I think if he fails here... Uh, the problem is she's not alone in this church. I think there are other people that are like, you know, the faith militant kind of thing. Where it's like, somebody's going to be here to fuck him up for trying to steal a... Like, it's not a holy artifact, but like a religious text from the church. Stealing from their leader. Like, this is all a big deal and it is not going to go well for Coyote in this kind of age. I think this is definitely going to be a, a fight that will break out uh, that we'll deal with next time. But let's see. How does this go? Whew. Okay, finally. It's been a long time since I've seen those words. Finally, the dice go back my way. We actually we do get the strong hit. Now, remember, this was not about stealth. This was just about snatching it quickly. She knows he took it. It's just that he gets away with it. So... The last moment of here... Now, granted, she already felt pretty bad about, like... She's not exactly the happiest person with him. The book is there. He snatches it from her arms and just runs off. And it, certainly now she's all the more just upset about the whole thing about Iron Sword. He has left quite the impact on her opinion about them. And he runs off while she shouts after him, but she's... She's kind of old and slow. She can't really chase him down. And he's, he's pretty swift, as we've seen before. Uh, and she's just crying out, like... But, st stop! Get, get him! Get him! But he's, he's too, with the result of the roll, he's too fast. Like, there are other people that try and chase him, but he's too quick. He gets away. Nobody knows his. And she just, like, drops to her knees and, uh, and just, like, she's not crying or anything, but just, like, pounds her hand on a pew and, uh, and, like, grabs something. is like, gripping it tight in her grip. And just, real, and just shouts out, like, I'm not going to do it in the mic because it's going to, like, peak and it'd be hor horrible. But she, she just lets out this yell. Like, I, I think she's got, like, there's a fury inside her. Not, like, in a direct, like, I'm going to fight you sort of way. But there's a fire inside that she's not just always just, like, keeping it cool, uh, cool-headed. And she lets it out in this, this scream inside the church that's just, like, echoing. Uh, and not, like, a scream of terror or, like... Uh, crying out like, oh my god! But like, um, but just a, a shout of frustration. And she just like pounds her fist on the, uh, on the pew. And it's not a frustration that he got away or stole this from her. It's not that it was that important. But a frustration that she opened herself up to being trusting like that. Uh, she, that she knew there was something off about this guy from the get-go. But that she let him get in. Uh, and she's frustrated with herself about that. I I'm thinking this is a person who has got some issues about, some trust issues, and uh, blames herself for things that she should probably blame, not blame herself for. But anyway, we go out on that. Coyote steals this book. And uh, yeah, let's wrap things up. I've gone over time by about 15 minutes, so I'm going to do a quick little wrap up here. I thank you for joining. Once again, this game is called Iron Swarm. It is a game designed around the ability to play it as a single person. Again, this is not by default a Western game, but as you can see, it uh, it translates to Western pretty well. Uh, it is available for free. You don't have to pay a dime at ironsworn.rpg.com. Heartily recommend you pick it up if you really, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, say some kind words to Sean Tompkin. He's available on Twitter, at Sean Tompkin, I believe. Um... Cool guy, made this game, and this person made it for free. If you really, really like it, you can also buy it. It, it is pay what you want. You can get a beautiful hard copy. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. I do this every Saturday for uh, two hours from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific time, or a little bit over this time. So I'll be back to do that next Saturday. And then, of course, I'll be back tomorrow for the thing a lot of people know me around here for, uh, the cello stream. So... Also on this channel, and if you're watching this on YouTube, that Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash midnightjester8. Uh, I do a cello stream, cello request for four hours from 5 to 9 p.m. Pacific time on Sundays, and then uh, usually an after party of some sort. So I'll be doing that tomorrow, and uh, yeah, hope to see you all around and in the future. If you are interested in this game but need to catch up on the previous sessions, they are all available on YouTube. This one will be up there later tonight. I get started with the export and upload process as soon as this is over. So that'll be up in a few hours. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in the future. Bye, everybody.